In this video, I'm going to look at CCA canonical correspondence analysis. Now, I've done a couple of things before starting. I have normalized the environmental variables here, and I've removed species which are all zero. In other words, I've gone to the edit, remove uninformative, and removed all zero columns. And then I've selected the environmental and all the taxa. So then we are multivariate all ordination. CCA first step is number of environmental variables. I've got four, as is usual. And let's make this a little bigger. And I'm going to turn off the column dots. So unlike the other ordinations we've looked at, this method CCA plots both the columns, that is the species, and the sites, that is the rows. And I can turn uh, the symbols on and off for both of those and also the labels. Um, before proceeding, I'll turn on the triplot and this option here simply multiplies all of the lines by the same multiple. So here I'm multiplying them all their length by 3.5 and that just makes the display a little bit easier to see so you can fiddle with that as you like now at the moment i'm showing scaling type one because i have the scaling type two box unchecked before i go further i've got a permutation test here i can see how much variation is being taken by each axis so 70 percent roughly for axis 1 and another 25% for axis 2 and this is in terms of the sites right and here's the scores for the sorry that is for the taxa and those are the scores if we wanted to plot the graph ourselves okay now we can't actually see much of what's going on in here for the symbols so let's turn the column labels off for a bit and now we can see what's happening in here a little bit more but maybe we want to actually make the vectors a little bit shorter okay now uh, circles uh, for the uh, north and squares are for the south and red uh, impact and reference are uh, blue are a reference or control and as in the other ordinations we get similar sort of pattern with the southern impact way out here remember this is looking at the taxa of course I should have realized that looking at looking at the taxa and as we go over here we get the reference and the northern impact which has somewhat elevated levels of hydrocarbons is in here between southern impact and all of the reference and as in the other ordinations the hc is increasing in this direction as we go from reference through to southern impact and uh, with this particular southern impact one uh, likely to have the highest levels of hydrocarbons and the other main axis is this one here which is a, a contrast between depth and nutrients increasing as we go up and sediment increasing as we go down so pretty much the same sort of story we've seen before so let's now put the column dots back on and add in the labels and I'll turn off the row labels and the row dots in order to make this clearer now you can see the column dots do not uh, take the colors and symbols that we coded for the rows of course not those are for the rows so all we get is a blue dot or if I wanted I could go into graph settings and change some of those things now scaling type 2 versus scaling type 1 uh, I should actually start this with the rows and start this with this setting. So let's drag it down. 
scaling type 1, which is what we have at the moment, projecting an object, which is a sample, at right angles on a quantitative explanatory variable, approximates the position of the object along that variable. So what does that mean if I project this back to its point on here, on HC? As I said earlier, this sample has high levels of hydrocarbons. So that's really all it's saying. Likewise, if I project it this way into depth, it's uh, at deeper than any of the other samples. Uh, though it's only going to be slightly deeper than the southern impact here. Um, if we go for the blue ones and project onto sediment, then all of the blue samples have fairly similar sediment particle size. That's scaling type 1. And I won't go any further with that. Um, Scaling type 2, now we need to put the sim, uh, species and symbols back on and I'll turn off the sites. Um, the optimum of a species can be obtained by projecting a species at a right angle on a variable. So if we take this worm here, for instance, which is worm number 9, and uh, project down here, that's its optimum sediment particle size. And you'll note that all of the taxa have an optimal hydrocarbon which is fairly small. And some of them are way out here, which means they're actually reacting very badly to hydrocarbons. A species found near the centroid of qualitative environment of a qualitative in environmental variable is likely to be found frequently in the sites that have that variable. Um, now that bit is more trickier for me to illustrate and explain, so I think I will simply stick with scaling type 2, which allows us, shows us where the species are. And scaling type 1 shows us where the samples sit with respect to the environmental variables. Now, uh, one of the questions asked in class, which I've partially answered, is how do I find species which are reacting to environmental variables, especially hydrocarbons? Now, I illustrated that you can do that with SIMPA, but SIMPA involves a comparison of two groups. So, um, for instance, reference and impact. Uh, CCA here is a better way to do that because I can simply look at species which are over here because those are the ones which are responding unfavorably to hydrocarbons. Ones that are up here are less bothered by hydrocarbons. So room 12 and 15 for example. And if we go back to the data, we can see worm 12 here and worm 15 here. So worm 12 is not found anywhere except at the southern reference site. And worm 15 is not found at the southern impact, which is the severe impact. Um, it's found in one sample from the northern impact, but otherwise it's only found in the reference locations. So this graph, oh, this graph here has gone a bit too big. This graph here is a way in which you can find species responding to environmental variables. And we can look for the other variables. So worm 3 here um, prefers um, larger, pedic larger particle size sediments. So it would be found mostly in the shallower water where there's relatively no nutrients. Okay, that's CCA, um, and it is a more informative automation option than uh, principal coordinates. 
and more informative to some extent than NMDS. Note, we are making some additional assumptions about the data when we're doing this. So it's a bit more restrictive in its use. For the data we're working with here, those assumptions are probably fairly reasonable. In other situations, maybe not so.